Okay, going into part 41, we will be going into an investigative supplement report. This report is dated October the 5th, 2018. The description is the interview with Olenka Hamza. We will re be referring to him as Hamza. The synopsis reads, Hamza. Hamza happened to meet Shannon Watts and an unidentified friend at a restaurant, Mount Fuji, located in Westminster, Colorado, in March or April of 2018. Hamza said he spoke with Watts about family law issues, divorce, in Colorado. Hamza is a licensed attorney. Okay, the address number one is a business number one, and that is Westminster, Colorado, Mount Fuji Restaurant. Subject, Victim 1, Shannon Whites. Subject, Witness 1, Hamza. And this gives the phone numbers. And the synopsis reads, On Friday, October the 5th, 2018, ICBI field agent Greg Zenter interviewed Hamza in connection to this case. Hamza indicated he had a chance encounter with Shannon Watts and her unidentified friend at a restaurant in March or April of 2018. Hamza said Watts asked him several questions of divorce laws in Colorado. Action taken. On Friday, October the 5th, 2018, I met with Hamza in Glendale, Colorado for an interview. The following is a summary of the interview. For a complete account of the interview, please review the attached audio file. You can find that here, or you can find it linked at the end of this video. Hamza told me the following. Hamza said in March or April of 2018, him and his wife happened to sit at a table at a hibachi-style restaurant in Westminster, Colorado, with Shanann Watts and an unidentified female friend of Watts. Hamza identified the restaurant as Mount Fuji, located in Westminster, Colorado. Hamza said he thought he and his wife got to the restaurant at about 8.30 p.m. I showed Hamza a photograph of Shanann Watts and Chris Watts, and Hamza positively identified Shanann Watts as the person sitting at his table. Hamza said Shanann Watts was wearing blue jeans and a faded orange blouse with the shoulders cut out. Hamza described Shanann Watts' friend as a white female with very distinct eyes, wearing a black dress, and Hamza later learned that the unidentified female was visiting from North Carolina. Hamza said there were two other people seated at the table with them, a mother and son from Minnesota. Hamza said he did not see Chris Watts at the restaurant, but he did recognize Chris Watts from the reports on television. Hamza said during the course of the conversations with Shanann Watts and her friend, he told them he was an attorney, Colorado attorney. Hamza said the fact that he was an attorney seemed to catch the attention of Shanann Watts. Hamza said he told Shanann and her friend that he practices nearly all areas of law except family law because family law is very messy. Hamza said Shanann began asking him several questions about how the divorce laws work in Colorado. Hamza said Shanann told him she had been divorced once before, but that was in North Carolina. Hamza said Shanann seemed to be interested in what could happen to children in divorce proceedings. Hamza said he told Shanann about the SPAR doctrine in Colorado, which specifically addresses the out-of-state relocation of children in a divorce occurring in Colorado. Hamza said he told Shanann 
that the presiding judge can't tell the custodial parent where to live, but the judge can decide on which parent will get custody of the children. Hamza continued and told Shanann that the courts will make decisions which will think is in the best interest of the children. Hamza said Shanann seemed concerned about this doctrine because she had two children from her current marriage, two girls. Hamza said he asked Shanann if she was thinking about getting a divorce, and Hamza said Shanann did not answer the question directly, but he did see her smile in response to the question. Hamza said he also noticed the unidentified friend smile as well. Hamza said after everyone at the table finished eating, they all stood up and Shanann approached him and asked a few more questions about divorce. Hamza said that he thought it was about 10 p.m. Hamza said Shanann asked if it was possible for the courts in Colorado to give custody of the children in a divorce to the man in the case. Hamza confirmed it was a possibility for the courts to grant the man custody of the children in a Colorado divorce case. Hamza said Shanann asked if divorce with children is a messy process and Hamza said he told Shanann that unless there is infidelity in the marriage, he would recommend doing everything possible to save the marriage rather than file for divorce. Hamza said he got the feeling that Shanann wanted to ask more in-depth questions about divorce, but he thought she was a little hesitant because her friend was there. Hamza said he remembered Shanann talked about wanting to have another child, but expressed concern for her health because the last time she was pregnant, she had issues with her lupus flaring up. Hamza said Shanann may have mentioned that her husband wanted a baby boy. Hamza said he did not remember seeing Shanann consume any alcohol during his time in contact with her. Hamza said Shanann asked for his contact information and he provided her with his cell phone number. Hamza said a few weeks ago he was watching a television news program when he saw Shanann Watt's picture on the telephone and being the victim of a homicide. He said he immediately recognized Shanann as the woman he had been talking to at the restaurant about divorce in Colorado. Hamza said he then reached out to the Frederick Police Department to report he had some important information about Shanann Watts. Nothing further. G. Center. Attachments, the audio file interview with Hamza. And I do have that video on here, and I will link it at the end of this one. I find this interview very interesting, to say the very least. This was back in, he said, April or May. And then, of course, shortly thereafter is when Shanann got pregnant with Nico. And we all know that Chris, in his stand-up thing that he did before they even got married, was maybe a baby could save a marriage. So, it makes you wonder. It makes anybody wonder. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? I mean, this is a licensed attorney. Why would he put his name, his license, and his reputation at stake to to do this. I mean, why would he even reach out and take the time to do this if it weren't true? Many people don't believe it's true. Many people think he made this up for five minutes of fame. Personally, I do not. I don't. I just don't see an, a real licensed attorney doing that. I mean, that, that would put him and his name and reputation in a bad place, and I, I just don't think so. But it makes you wonder, why was she so concerned about divorce back in April or May? Was there issues? Many people believe the North Carolina trip could have been a trial separation. And if you think of it in certain terms, I mean, you could think of it that way as well. Was it? I do not know. Was it just a vacation with family? I don't know. If it was, it was something very out of the ordinary. It had never been done before. This was the very first time ever that they had even been back to North Carolina to visit since they moved to Colorado. 
so that you know and to make it for a whole six week span and pretty much the entire time they are apart Shanann and, and you all have to admit she refers to Chris as living a bachelor life and I think you enjoyed being alone too much and I, I don't know there's so many what is Chris and Shanann were so closed off about their relationship and issues until the very end and then finally Shanann just started telling it like it was but I believe there was things that happened and issues they did have in their marriage that till this day except Chris nobody knows about really I think there was that's me I don't even think I mean when Shanann was in North Carolina and she was so sick well she was having it was making her that much more frustrated because she was there and she was having to act like every she said this herself act like everything's okay because she was in front of her parents and she was saying it was the pregnancy and this that and the other making her so upset and sick and you know and and she even mentioned to her friend yeah you know I don't like living this fake life and you know I have to act like this because we're in front of my parents so I do think that they didn't let they they probably did have issues long before this and I'm not talking about horrendous issues but I do believe they had contemplated separating before this I do and I believe Nico was quite possibly what they was both at the time thinking may be the saving grace of their marriage because Chris did think that way he said it in his little stand-up thing and Shanann commented on it and she said good job baby great advice so you know obviously she thought the same way so yeah okay moving right along this is going to be a case master report from the CBI and this is dated August the 14th contains entities exempt from disclosure phone interview with Brianne Roop, what's a CPR instructor? On Wednesday, October the 10th, 2018, ICBI agent Tammy Lee interviewed Brianne Roop Sackett with SRP Environmental LLC. Roop was the CPR first aid instructor who taught Christopher Watts on March the 4th, 2015, at Anadarko Petroleum's Platteville, Colorado office. Action taken. On Thursday, October the 4th, 2018, I called and left a message for Brianne Rope Sackett to call me. Brianne was listed in the, as the primary instructor for a renewal course on the Medic First Aid Basic Plus CPR, AED, and First Aid for Adults. According to the class roster, the training took place on March the 4th, 2015 at the Anadarko office in Platteville, Colorado. Chris Watts' name was signed on the roster. On Wednesday, October the 10th, 2018, I called and speak, spoke to Roop on the phone. Roop explained she started working for Soapweed Solutions in 2012 and 2010, and the company was bought out by SRP Environmental. Roop said she was laid off by SRP environmental at around April of 2016. I asked Rope if she recalled having Christopher Watts in one of her classes and she said yes. Rope said she saw a photograph of Christopher Watts on the news and mentioned to her husband that she looked like someone from Anadarko she had in class. Rope said she is very good at remembering faces. Rope said she cannot recall anything specific about the class Watts attended, including anything about Watts' behavior or demeanor. Rope believed the company she worked for didn't obtain the contract to train Anadarko employees until around 2014 or 2015. Rope said it felt like she spent most Wednesdays at Anadarko when it was time for first aid and CPR renewal. Roop said she only taught Anadarko employees first aid CPR for adults and was very strict about it in class. 
Rope said sometimes an Adarko students would ask her about doing CPR on a child, and she would tell them they would only use one hand for compressions on a child, but that was it. Rope said she told the Anadarko employees if they wanted to learn about infant and child CPR, they would have to come back and go through the four-hour class that she did not have the proper equipment or time to teach them during class. Rupe explained she was a certified instructor for infant and child CPR. I asked Rupe if she ever had other Anadarko employees with prior EMS training talk about infant and child CPR during her classes, and she said it happened occasionally. Rupe said she would always be very strict and inform the class they were only to discuss adult CPR and first aid. Rope said all of the certificates and cards given to the employees after the classes specifically said adult on them as well. I asked Rope if she recalled that version of Medic First she used for Anadarko employees and she said no. Rope said she did use videos and adult Resussy Annie dolls. Rope also explained she would speak to Anadarko employees about the oil site safety, which included caring for rattlesnake bites, inclement weather conditions, slippery paths, etc. I asked Rope if any of her training for Anadarko employees included information which could also be found in the infant child CPR training classes. Rope said she could really only recall checking for breathing and pulse and calling 911 as being similar in both classes. I thank Rope for speaking with me and disconnected the call. Nothing further. Attachments none. Okay, coming on down. This is going to be an investigative supplement. Date October the 16th, 2018. Description. Endangered Missing Alert Issued. Frederick Police Department. Occurrence from August the 14th. Occurrence to August the 16th. Synopsis. On August the 14th, 2017, CBI Investigative Analysis Jillian Gangley issued an endangered missing alert on a missing person investigation on behalf of the Frederick Police Department. The alert was canceled on August the 16th, 2018. Subject number one, Chris Letts. Missing person number one, Bella. Missing person number one continued, Bella. Missing person number two, Celeste. Missing person number three, Shanann. Action taken. On Tuesday, August the 14th at around 11.28 a.m., I received an email from Devon Rhodes at the CIAC, the Colorado Information Analysis Center. He included a news article about a missing woman and two children in Frederick, Colorado. He wanted to know if we had seen it and if we were doing anything about it. I told him I had not, but that I would check in with the agency to see if we could be of assistance. He stated he had not received any requests from the Frederick Police Department. At 11.44 a.m., I called, which was the number provided on the missing persons flyer, and asked to speak with Detective Dave Balmover. I told him that I had seen the missing persons poster and wondered if he considered doing any kind of alert. He asked if he could run the whole situation past me to see if there was anything we could do to help, and the facts at the time were these. 34-year-old Shanann Watts and her two daughters, Bella 4 and Celeste 3, were missing. Shanann had been on a trip to Arizona for the weekend, and the two girls had been home with their dad, Christopher Watts. Shanann had returned to the house at around 1.30 a.m. on Monday, August the 13th, 2018, as confirmed by reporting party Nicole Atkinson. Nicole had been on a trip to Arizona with Shanann, and she had driven Shanann home from the airport. She confirmed she saw Shanann go into the house around 1.30 a.m., and that was the last time Nicole had seen or heard from Shanann. The next day, Nicole attempted to contact Shanann several times, but never received a response. This was very unlike Shanann, who in general was very responsive. 
Nicole went to the Watts' residence to check on Shanann later that morning. She saw that Shanann's car was still in the garage and her favorite flip-flops were by the door. This was very alarming to Nicole. Nicole knew Shanann was scheduled to be at a doctor's appointment that morning, so Nicole went there to check. She was told by the doctor's office that Shanann had not shown up. Nicole then became very worried and contacted Shanann's husband, Chris. Chris stated that he had not heard from Shanann that morning. Nicole stated she could tell that something was wrong and that Chris needed to come home from work immediately. Police arrived at the Watts residence around the same time Chris arrived. Officers entered the house with Chris's permission and swept the residence. They found that all of Shanann's personal items were left at the house to include her keys, her wallet, and the children's medications. The girls' car seats were left at the house as well. Upon further search, Shanann's phone was found at the residence. The Frederick Police Department decided to fly drones over the open space above the Watts residence and just had cadaver dogs go through the residence. According to Detective Baumover, the dogs had just alerted to an area near the basement stairs. He stated that an additional dog was on its way to attempt to confirm the alert. After learning of all the facts, I asked Baumover if the family had any electronic devices that could be tracked. He stated that Shanann's phone was at the house and they didn't know if any other devices existed. I then asked if there were any bodies of water around the area and he stated there were not. I relayed to Baumover that I thought an endangered missing alert may be appropriate given the fact, but that I needed to confer with my chain of command. He then informed me that the Frederick Police Department was running out of resources and he wondered if we could provide investigative assistance as well. I told Baumover that I would get back to him regarding the alert, but that he would send agents immediately. Next, I went to relay the situation to CBI Assistant Director Balls and ask for help, for his help assigning agents to assist. He agreed with my decision and sent several agents to Frederick. I then called agent in charge Kirby Lewis to advise him. Finally, I called Detective Baumover back and informed him that I would be happy to issue the alert, but would like to wait to hear the results of the second sweep of the dogs. If the alert was a good one, I would hold off. However, if the alert could not be confirmed, we would issue. I prepared the alert while I waited to hear about the dogs. At around 2.45 p.m., I received a call from CBI agent Tammy Lee, who relayed that the dog's hit could not be confirmed and that we could go ahead with an alert. The alert was issued on 8-14-2018 at 3.20 p.m. See supplementals for details of the investigation. Shanann Bella and Celeste Watts were recovered on 8-15-2018 and 8-16-2018, respectively. The alert was canceled on 8-16 at 8-33 p.m. once all three had been recovered and removed from the scene. End of report. And it just shows the attachment that was on this report. And this is an incident report from the Well County Office of the District Attorney, received by Dan Boyle and dated September the 12th, 2018. Witness, Kelly Carmen at the jail index. List miscellaneous dockets included with this supplemental report. Inmates, mail, letters 29 and 58. Names, involvement, narrative. This supplement is to document the ongoing receipt of mail Watts has been receiving since 9-8-18 to 10-16-18. An additional 30 letters has been received during his confinement at NJC. They are labeled number 29 and number 58. The letters consisted of personal letters from people asking to be pen pals, several religious quotes and verses, etc. Item number 57 was from a neighbor of Watts's, which was forwarded to Detective Baumover. While intermediately monitoring technologies, the recorded inmate calling system, the defendant has not made any calls since my last supplement in a report. 
and this looks like it's just going into some of the mail he has been receiving or was receiving and this is going to be letter 29 from someone named Candace. Okay, this also letter 29 and also letter 29 dated September the 7th 2018. Hi Chris this is Candace again. So I called Weld County and talked to someone and he said that you would need to add me but if you don't want to then that's fine I'll just continue to write letters lol. Anyway I hope that you're doing okay. Believe it or not I think about you often. Well actually a shit time lol. My cousin shared a news story about you on Facebook and honest to God I got so 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 upset about the stupid ass comments that assholes were saying about you. Oh my God, I was legit mad as hell. I absolutely do not believe what everyone is saying about you. In my eyes, they're all wrong. Like I've said in my previous letters that I really, really, really do care about you. Don't ask me why. Maybe I'm nuts or crazy, LOL. Chris, I will stop writing you if you want me to. It's just that I want you to tell me that. I was so hoping that I would have heard from you by now, but nope. And that's okay. Well, not really, lol. I just want you to know that I believe in you 100%. I want to get to know you so bad, it's not even funny. I know that we do not know one another, but I'm, but in my heart, I truly want that to change. Please, please, please add me to your visitation list and trust me, you will not be sorry. Can we be pen pals? I'm going to your next hearing in November. I will be there for support. Literally, you're on my mind almost every single day since you were on the news and I was like, oh my effing God, I have to meet this man. And I was determined to do that. Trust me when I say this, I do not care what happened or whatever, but I really do care about you. Don't know why, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be constantly writing you. Hope that you have been reading them. I mean, I guess one could dream, lol, right? You can call me whenever. I will accept the charges in a heartbeat. I'm seriously not even joking. You are very, very special to me. You have absolutely how much grief and heartache I'm getting every day because I'm literally trying almost every day to make contact with you. And so far, I've had 0% no luck. I'm a little embarrassed, but that's okay. As long as I'm writing you, all of my embarrassment literally goes out the window. I don't care what my friends and family think. I really, really don't. Oh well, it is what it is. I guess, okay, well, I'm gonna let you go. I'm hoping that you write me back. I really do. Take care of yourself and I will continue to write and send you letters for as long as it takes. Always, love always, Candace. And this will be letter 30. And this one says, this one is dated September the 9th. Hi. Hi, what's up? Hope all is well. It's Sunday, September the 10th or the 9th, lol. I've lost track of days here lately. Anyway, I'm just getting ready for work. 3 to 9 p.m. I'm kind of a manager shift leader at Subway, lol. My job is okay, I guess, lol. It's a job, right? I hope you've been getting all of my letters. I guess one can only hope, right? I'm going to guess that by your silence that you don't want to talk to me. But that's okay. Because I swear to God, I won't stop till you write me back. At least one time, LMAO. All I want is to be your friend. And honest to God, I can legit say this till I'm blue in the face for real. When I send my next letter... I'll also send a picture of me, so that way you can see who's been contacting you this entire time. I would love, love, love to come visit you sometime. 
if it's okay with you. Like I had said before that, I'll be at your next hearing on November the 19th at 1030 in District 16, right? Just had a little mishap with my daughter, LOL. She got super mad at me because I wouldn't let her use or play with my phone to play roadblocks and Fortnite. And she started to throw a huge ass fit, throwing her normal daily temper tantrum and started kicking my table that had my wax warmer on it. And of course, that fell off the table and directly onto my phone. Grr. I was hella mad, LMAO, but it's all good. She can use her iPad from here on out. Okay, well, I'm going to let you go for now. I'll write another letter here in a few days. Love always, Candace from Broomfield, Colorado. And this is going to be letter number 31. And this is going to be from Hawaii. And this is a postcard from Maui. Also from letter number 31. And this is the back of the postcard. Chris, those two buildings called the Whaler, a total monstrosity, is the resort property that I book. Boring job, lol. However, my actual office is located in, I'm not sure, away from the tourist. The beach is nice though. Lots of sharks. Kidding. Just a few. And postcard again from Maui. And the back, Chris, this beautiful little valley and neighborhood is about 15 minute drive from where I live on the upper west side of Maui. They like making banana bread there for some reason. Can I mail you some? P.S. No, K.O. means the best. These women are so, I don't know, I don't, I don't have words. Especially the one with the little girl up there. Oh my God. And then her telling him how mad she was at her little girl. Wow. I just don't get people, man. And again, letter number 31, September the 7th. Hey, Chris, it's Friday. And I just wanted to touch base with you this week. I really feel I need to tell you things are going to be okay. I know you must have a thousand things on your mind right now, but truly know you can have a positive outcome to what lies ahead of you. I promise God can turn this around for you in ways you can't even imagine. Just trust in Him. Because I too have been in some pretty bad situations and once I surrendered it over to Jesus and kind of just gave up because there wasn't anything I could do at that point, things had a way of being okay. Like I said in my letter last week, you are a kind, decent man, and right now, please don't give up on yourself. You have a voice. You have rights. Hopefully, your mind is sharp and your heart is tender. There are people that believe in you. Just please don't give up. Okay, enough preaching. Here are some things going on. I'm sending a couple of postcards so you can see where I live. Like I said earlier, there is some hard parts to living on Maui, geez. If some people only knew. My favorite all-time place to visit so far has been New Zealand. Oh, how I wish I could live there. It's a cross between Colorado and Hawaii, pure heaven. I dream of visiting Switzerland, Norway, and Sweden. As far as local news, we are due for another hurricane this coming week, Olivia. I don't believe it, but I guess I have to be prepared. Damn, I'm just happy if I don't have to go to work, lol. Did you ever have to experience hurricanes at all? They definitely can be a little scary. Growing up in Colorado toughened me up, I guess. Blizzards, lightnings, and high winds, oh, and mountain lions. I don't watch any TV if I can help it, but I do like YouTube and documentaries. Things that make you laugh. Yes, like Seinfeld. My favorite. I can't stand politics either. If I can go one day without seeing Trump's face or hear about his rants, then that's a good day. However, 
I did go to Bernie Sanders rally at CSU in FTC back in 2016, which was incredible. Cool guy. Right now, I'm listening to Crosses. It's a band with the lead singer from the Deftones. He's definitely more laid back, but I love his voice. He also has another side project called Pump, which I love too. Lately, I've been watching Nine Inch Nails on YouTube. Their Austin City Limits concert, wow. But I listen to pretty much everything except pop. Can't stand it. How about you? Can I stick her books on tape to listen to? I just now went on the Weld City website and see there isn't anything stating that you're not allowed music or books, or at least I didn't see anything noted. I do see where I cannot send stamps or envelopes, so that you can write me back if you wanted to. Oh well. However, I'm totally happy to accept a collect call if you need someone to talk to, and I hope that the jail is offering you some counseling too. And of course your family and friends are here for you, and me too, for the long haul. I have not told anyone I'm writing to you. It's none of their business, I promise. Confidence and support if you need it. I just want to give you some hope. Tomorrow will be a better day. Your friend, and I'm not sure what that says. Okay. Letter number 32, sent by airmail. This is going to be from someone named Kate. And this is Kate. And this is Kate. And this is Kate's letter. And this is dated August the 24th. Dear Chris, for days, I've had an overwhelming feeling to sit down and write to you. We obviously don't know each other, but my name is Kate, and I'm writing to you from Australia. I truly hope that this letter finds you eventually. I've never done this before, and to be honest, I sat with this feeling for some time. I just can't seem to process the fact that you are sitting there all alone. I'm hoping you're not completely alone and you have some family support. I won't lie, I've seen the news, but it's not my reason for writing to you. You honestly have one of the kindest faces I've ever seen. I don't even know you, yet I don't want you to feel alone. You also very much remind me of someone that I used to know. You can do as you please with this letter. Of course, I would love to hear from you, talking about whatever you wish to, but if for some reason you feel you are unable to write, then I'll completely understand that too. I've included a photo of me so you can put a face to the name. Maybe then I won't feel like such a stranger to you. I'm from Melbourne in Australia. I'm 35 years old and have pretty much traveled the world. As much as I've loved it, I think Australia will always be home for me. I'm an executive assistant to a CEO who is always over in Denver for business. Funnily enough, it's somewhere I've always wanted to visit. It really does look beautiful over there. It's the strangest thing writing to someone who up until this point didn't even know you existed. Not really sure if they're in too much I could say or maybe too little. As I've already explained the thought of someone feeling alone doesn't sit right with me. We're only human. We need love and contact in some form or the other. I could only hope that someone would care enough to do the same for me. I just wanted to give you some form of contact from the outside world and just maybe give you the smallest amount of comfort, Chris. The hard part is not knowing if this letter will even make it your way and not knowing if you'll be able to reply or even if you want to. It's going to take at least a couple of weeks to get over to the States. That much I do know. I have all the time in the world to talk to you if you want to hear about the outside world 
from a complete stranger on the other side of the world. But until then, you will be in my thoughts. I do hope to hear from you someday soon. Be strong, Chris. Kate. Okay, this is going to be letter 33, and it looks like it is coming from, no, coming from Fulton. Yeah, this is coming from Fulton. I can't tell. From someone named Michael. Well, County Sheriff, I'm not sure if this is allowed, and it is fine. If not, and you can trash this letter, but it was worth an attempt. I'm in Mississippi, and I have no relation nor contact connection to Christopher Watts. However, with all the media coverage surrounding Chris Watts, as a Christian, I feel compassion for this guy. At this point, I realize the laws of this land determine innocent until proven guilty. Outside of confessions of crimes, I have thought about this guy and his situation and have tried to wrap my mind around the logic and or reasoning for his actions. My reasons for sending a letter is in hopes to reach out to him and offer some type of spiritual insight and or resolve for him. Even though in my mind for someone to do something so brutal has to have a force controlling them, but he still has a soul and a destiny beyond the perimeters of this life. If it is allowed for Christopher to read the below, or if someone can read it to him, perhaps it will help counteract the obvious turmoil surrounding him at this time. Many thanks for your time, Michael White. It goes on to read, Christopher Watts, my name is Michael White and I live in Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm 49 years old, married with three teenage children, a 19-year-old daughter, a 17-year-old twin boys. I am a Christian and a worship leader at my local church. Obviously, I know what it is like to be a husband and a father, but more than that, I am full aware of the only God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and His presence in my life. I also am familiar with mistakes and failures. I also, but also the amazing grace and mercy extended to me over and over again by Jesus Christ my Lord. I cannot even imagine what you are going through right now. When I see videos surrounding your court appearances, it is your eyes that catch me every single time. I recognize the pain. I do not judge you. On the contrary, I have a huge burden for you. The thing with a relationship with Jesus Christ, He does not care what our past is. He forgives every single time. Now, post-forgiveness, there is some actions we get forgiveness for that carry away more consequences for than others. But forgive my prayer for you is this. Confess you believe God sent His Son, Jesus, to this earth to die on a cross for your sins and rose again on the third day and sits in heaven. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Word of God. You will be saved immediately. You will be a born-again Christian, no matter what you face from that moment on. As long as you keep loving Him and acknowledging Him as your Savior, you will have a home for eternity in heaven. I'll be praying for you and especially on November the 19th. God bless, Michael White. Wow. I wonder if that letter may have been one of the things that led him into such Christianity. Okay, going on down. This is going to be letter number 34, September the 17th. And this is looks like religious publications. And yes, this is going to definitely be some sort of a flyer, a religious flyer. It is written in another language I cannot read. And the same here, I cannot read this. And I cannot read that. Nor this. Ugh, yeah, nor that either. Looks like somebody sent him just a bunch of religious flyers. Um, yeah, it's exactly what this is. And maybe a little test. And so we will just go right through them since I can't read them. You, if you want to read them, you're more than welcome to pause it and whatever. But I don't know. I can't read them. And there's a lot of them. Wow. Yeah, there is a several many of them. That must have been a fat envelope. Envelope, sorry. 
So you can call me out on it. Sorry. And wow, there's a bunch of those. Or I think maybe, yeah, this is letter 35. So this is going to be a different letter, but I believe probably from the same person. And we will just scroll through them because I cannot read them anyway. As you see, a lot of the discovery is filled up with just um, absolutely, in my opinion, irrelevant things. You know, I, I find this irrelevant and a waste of space, really. Now, here's some that we can read. This is written in English. However, I'm not going to because it's pretty much, you know, just just Bible verses. And if you want to, screenshot it, read it away. But, yeah, I'm not going to because I don't really believe it has anything to do with the case. So, yeah. Okay, now we're on letter 36, and this is going to be from Lynn Massingale. And I'm going to stop this video right here. When we come back, we will read Lynn Massingale's letter to Christopher Watts. Thank you all for, I would really appreciate a thumbs up if you would be so inclined. It would truly greatly appreciate it. And it is a free way that you can just help the channel. And it really does help the channel. So, okay, guys. Until next time, I hope you have a nice, great, wonderful day, night, evening, wherever you may be. This is Unjustified.